Well, uh, I've just had the opportunity to hear from uh, businesses all across the country uh, to talk about the importance of reauthorizing the Export-Import Bank. Uh, this is not an issue that typically rises to the front page of the newspapers. But for these businesses and for their employees and for the communities that they serve, this is vital. Now, uh, just understand what the Export-Import Bank does and has been doing for 81 years is to help U.S. companies with U.S. employees sell their products overseas. It helps a small you know, coffee company or quiche company, but also large manufacturers of trains or bridges and infrastructure to be able to go to foreign, business, uh, foreign businesses, foreign markets, in some cases foreign governments, and say to them, America makes the best product in the world, we want to sell to you, and we are prepared to do business with you uh, on terms that allow you initially, maybe not to send us all the cash, but we've got, uh, you know, we're sending the goods to you, you get the cash back, and as a consequence of this arrangement, not only do we not end up uh, subsidizing these companies, these companies are paying a fee to the ex Export-Import Bank. The Export-Import Bank makes money for the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. So I just want to be clear about this. This is not a situation in which taxpayers are subsidizing these companies. In fact, at the end of the day, we have a situation in which the U.S. Treasury is benefiting while at the same time allowing these companies to sell their products overseas. And this historically has been a bipartisan program under Democratic presidents and Republican presidents with support from Democratic members of Congress and Republican members of Congress. The, the fact that for the first time since its inception, Congress failed to reauthorize this uh, is a shame, and this is what Representative Heck was alluding to. Every other advanced country on Earth has a program like this in order to promote their businesses when they're selling overseas. And for us to be the only country that leaves these outstanding companies high and dry makes absolutely no sense. You'll hear some critics suggest that, well, this is just uh, corporate welfare for big multinationals. That is wrong. It is true that Boeing is able to sell planes and GE is able to sell uh, big turbine engines, in part because of this kind of, kind of financing arrangement, because oftentimes the customer's not prepared to just go ahead and pay cash up front. But Farrah Coffee is a company with 12 employees. It needs this. You know, Susan Axelrod's company makes quiche, but 30% of their revenue is from exports. We, we've got companies here that range from 12 employees up to 500 employees. All of them are savvy business people. If, in fact, they were able to make uh, effective financial arrangements in the private marketplace, they would do so. But private financing and the traditional banks are not able to provide the same service or have the same expertise about dealing with some of these other markets that the Export-Import Bank does. So this should be a no-brainer. <clears throat> Nobody's presented to me a plausible argument as to why we wouldn't do this. And by the way, this also affects every community in the country. There's a reason why we got the mayors of Mobile, Alabama, and, and Mesa, Arizona here. You've got small uh, companies and, or, or small companies in small towns in Texas that are being affected. You've got small companies in Portland, New Hampshire, Maine. From coast to coast, people are being affected by this. And we heard stories from these companies right now that orders are on hold, business is endangered, potentially expansions will stall, fewer employees will be hired if we do not get this done. So, uh, we need to get this done.
And the good news is, is that you've got outstanding members of Congress like Maxine Waters and Denny Heck and Gwen Moore and uh, senators like uh, uh, you know, Sherrod Brown and, and uh, you know, Heidi Heitkamp and, and uh, Maria Cantwell who've been working this issue very hard for a long time. Uh, these next couple of weeks before Congress adjourns is the time for us to go ahead and complete this. Uh, we cannot leave these businesses hanging. We cannot unilaterally disarm. Most importantly, we can't have American workers losing jobs because Congress doesn't act or because of some ideological arguments that don't make any sense and don't match up with the facts. So uh, I feel very strongly about this. I, I, I know it's not as interesting as some of the other issues and Donald Trump and all that, but <laughs> I tell you what, this is actually something that matters to people on the ground. Uh, and I'm hoping that uh, we really uh, stay focused on this until Congress reauthorizes. All right? So I want to thank the companies who are being here. Uh, we really appreciate you telling your stories. And I'm willing to bet that any of these companies uh, or the mayors uh, who are here representing their communities will be happy to meet with some of the members of the media and tell uh, their stories more directly uh, so that you guys can highlight uh, what's at stake here. All right? Thank you very much, everybody. What's amazing is, is that Africans always rank high. Uh, despite poverty, despite conflict, uh, there is a strength and a resilience there. Uh, and the opportunities are extraordinary. Uh, and, and we just have to break down the stereotypes and the barriers.